Morning everybody, how we doing? Is it all good out there? Sunshine's coming out here today. Oh, it was very wet yesterday, but today it's lovely. But a very wet day meant that I got the next block done for the Witter Quilt, for Witter Quilt 11. And I also got some samples done, ready to do a full on um, video for Machine Reverse Applique, which is what I do most of the time and I'm known for teaching. Um, I call it Pile and Plunder but you'll find all about that in another video. Um, but today, yes, we're gonna do a witter block. So, and it's slightly different because I'm gonna show you how I make templates when I need a one-off. If I'm gonna use something throughout a quilt, I will buy, always I will get a, a proper template or have them made or whatever. But if I just need for one block, or a one-off that I'm not gonna use again, I will make my own. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, so that's the block we're doing today. Okay, I think it's called a prairie flower or something. So we like that. It's a little bit different. Um, looks flowerish and even looks as if it might sort of have a curve or two, but it's not. It's all straight line quilt uh, patching. All right. So yeah, so that's what we're doing today. Now there's some very weird shapes going on in there, isn't there? Yeah. So we've got this sort of works like that yeah so how do we get to that how do we get to that there's a couple of weird shapes and if you're not used to this and if you've not done hand uh, traditional patchwork you might not know how to make yourself a little quick template all right so what i do first i've actually taken some photos of this as well that i will put on uh yeah patchwork witterings of abby Ann over on facebook so if you need to go and check, you'll find. I've just realised I'm looking at this camera and it's all a bit wonky. I do. I apologise, folks. <laughs> it's a bit strange there today. Right. So first of all, what have we got going on in the pattern? Yeah, we've got three different blocks. So our corner blocks are one, our side blocks are another, and obviously we've got a, a four-inch square in the centre. So on my on my patterns, I always give you measurements for the outside edge of a finished block. OK, so you know what you're aiming at. But then it's like, well, how the hell do I do that then? Right. So draw yourself a full size version of the pattern. So you want a four inch square on this particular one. All right. Let me get this. Here we are. So this started as a four inch square and I and I drew the lines on for the pieces. Yeah. And then I cut those two pieces off to give me this. So the measurements that I gave you, you just draw it to the measurements, okay? Now this might seem long-winded, but if you think about it, it's quite easy how I do it. It takes a little minute, but you get the accuracy, all right? So you've drawn what you want to finish with, okay? So then cut it apart and then draw around that on a piece of card and add your quarter of an inch seam allowance. All the way around and then cut that one out and that's the one you use all right so that's got your seam allowance on so now if you were hand patchworking you'd use that one because you just draw around that and as you cut it out you would add your seam allowance so that's fabulous so that's the old-fashioned way yeah but if you want to do it by machine draw around that one add your quarter of an inch and then you can rotary cut this is quite thick card that I use and I can just whip around that. If not, and you don't, you, you seriously don't want to be taking your fingers off with your rotary cutter, draw around that, cut it out, pair of scissors. It's what we always used to do. I think we've forgotten this. Everything needs to have to be done by a rotary. Well, it doesn't, you can do it by, but with just a pair of scissors. Draw your line, cut it out, then you can machine it. Yeah? So that's how I do mine, but only if I want a one off. I wouldn't be doing that if I was going to do a whole quilt with this I'd be looking for templates because I really do value my fingers um, I don't need to, to lose the ends off them and cut myself or whatever but for just a one block or in this case I used it twice then I'll use cardboard all right having said that if there is anything you want making into an actual and you can't find a template I'm going to plug my mate Andy at Crafty UK all right, you'll find him on Facebook and everywhere else. Um, you'll see him at all the shows. 
he makes my templates for me um, and I obviously I sell a whole load because I've designed a load but he always makes them for me I know that if you've got a pattern that you really seriously need provided it's not copywritten anywhere he'll do you a set of templates and then you've got to ask him he's very good just yeah look out for Anne. andy at crafty uk all right so i've put photos of this in how to um what i've done how i got to where i am to get to this all right so the other thing with with this today all right so as i've said you've got three different squares your center is easy you could actually it might be nice actually if you if you did a design in the center as well i was thinking of actually putting a cross in the center so you've got sort of smaller triangles there to give it a little bit more something up to you you could put a little square and, a, and border it that would give it like the center of a flower there's all sorts of things you can do just because this is the traditional and this is the one i've done vary it you know this one's here the 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 pointy outs you could put a line down the center and have doubles there's all sorts you can do don't don't feel just because that's what it says you have to do that's what you have to do all right as long as you can come back to the same size you're fine and if you need to as i say draw it make it go for it so you're going to make four of the corner blocks four of the side blocks and obviously the one in the center so i make them all up into little squares and then i join them in a row so it'll be that one to that one to that one for a strip then I join that one to that one to that one for a strip and then you join the strip to the strip okay and then do the same at the bottom and then join that one up always try and work in straight lines it makes life so much easier when you're joining things what you don't want to be doing is going around a corner to try and get things done or um, unless you're planning on a specific block and it's maybe got a y seam or something but then there's a technique to that isn't there um, that you can look up and have a little look to but to make life easier always think straight lines i tend to think building blocks yeah because you wouldn't go up in one area and then try and fill in you do it all nice straight lines and it gets your accuracy all right so take your time everything is down to accuracy to make things fit you're getting a lecture today i'm sorry folks <laughs> i'm in mode ain't i um so the more accurate you are to start so i if you're going to make templates um, or you're cutting they need to be accurate if you've got that as accurate as you possibly can and I quite often I'll get a ruler and I'll put a template or a piece of fabric underneath the ruler and double check on my sizings is it right because if it's not you're never going to stand a chance all right so accuracy from the very start means it will follow through and hopefully then your block will look fabulous with with spot on points and corners and things yeah um, I was going to say something else then and it's just slipped out my mind. Accuracy, straight lines, well, you know, you'll, you'll come back if it needs to. It couldn't have been that important. Um, yeah, so there we are. That's our next block. Block four of Witty Quilt 11. All right. Um, what else is there to tell you? I should have been at Malvern this weekend and I apologise to those that thought I was going to be there and been teaching. Um, other stuff's happened and I've not been able to attend. So I do apologise. I know a few people I've already um, emailed with or spoken to or messaged when they've asked am I going to be there. I do apologise. I had fully intended being there and I've had to back out just in dusk. So there we go. Um, such is life, isn't it? Unfortunately, some things overtake. Right. What else is that? Sunshine. Sunshine's there. Tom's not here. Tom the cat. Black cat Tom. He's um, trundled off out because it's a nice sunny day. He didn't go anywhere yesterday. He was mithering all day long. Um, but it's lovely, so he's obviously gone mouse hunting. He brought me a mouse the other day. Hey. Poor little thing. It had gone. No mind, eh? He thinks he's feeding me, doesn't he? Bless him. Not if I need feeding. <laughs> there we are. Right, okay, so look, watch out tomorrow, Sunday. Um, I'm going to do a Sunday special. I think it might be Christmas fabrics. Not sure what or how, but keep an eye out that time of year we need these things don't we lots of inspiration over on on my page hopefully um lots of patterns and ideas and things um and classes going on all the time here in weybridge excuse me so if you want a class or you want a pattern give us a shout all right what's left to say be lovely <laughs>